Hey what's up guys, it's Athena and today I had a banger video for you guys. So recently I got my diamond with these secrets, but it kind of felt easy. I'm not trying to be cocky or anything. These aren't one time things, I hit diamond past seasons and I'm about to show you guys the secrets to hitting diamond in Crimson Heist. So it's really important that you watch until the end, that way you don't miss any information that is really important and that it can help you win more games. So if you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you guys are subscribed and let's try to hit a thousand likes the first 24 hours. I think we can do it. I think we can. And these aren't really secrets, more so patterns I see over time that players are building up and things that I, I personally wasn't utilizing to get myself better in Siege earlier on. Now, this is a really important part for Crimson Heist is the people that you play with. So you got to ask yourself, have you been solo queuing, duo, trio, or even five stacking lately? And ask yourself how your results have been. Have you been winning? Have you been losing? Is it one and up, one and down? If it's one and up and one and down, it's really important that you watch this video. So Ubisoft has been having a really weird ELO glitch lately. So it makes it uh, having more people just makes it a lot more avoidable to counteract that glitch. And we'll talk about that in another video. But it's really important that you vibe, that you're having a good time, you're having fun. Because if you aren't, bad things are going to happen. It's possible to hit diamond either way, so let me break it down for y'all. Solo queuing, you get a top frag almost every single game. A very inconsistent, uh, a high chance of winning and losing. And also cheaters uh, in your lobby that which you could have you make rollback in the future. And trust me, when you log on to Siege, you had a good night yesterday, and you'd be like, I just lost 84 ELO. So then you have duo queuing. In duo queuing, you have someone to talk to, someone to communicate, someone you can actually work with. This could be a buddy from school, you know, someone you just enjoy playing with in general. But it's really important, like I said, you guys need to vibe. Kind of makes up uh, for the randoms by making smart plays in your end. And especially the less people you have, you don't really have control over important stuff, so you don't want to invest any negative energy when you are solo queuing or when you have any randoms in your team. Whether it's ranting in game chat uh, to you or your own team, it's going to be very chaotic if you make it. So cut the trash talk and just play the game. Take the W home. Now with that being said, I ain't all set in stone. I know a lot. I mean, I think in every high rank in every game, there's just that one toxic person that does not stop talking. But at the end of the day, he hits all the points that I'm put out, gonna put on this video. So I guess it really doesn't matter. But overall, what I want to tell you guys is don't get inside your head. You got to be the mature one for me in those situations, all right? Now we move on to trio. Four queuing is a little bit better. More communication and control over your team setup. And overall, like you guys are just more on page with each other. You don't have people solo pushing around the map. I mean, you probably will, but... You kind of avoid that kind of stuff then more likely for the increasing chances of you actually playing to win rather than playing to lose but this is the most important thing of all of out of all of them in my opinion is five stacking the only downside of five stacking is if you guys are not vibing with each other that means you guys are just constantly talking in game to each other oh wait well bad comic bad communication like man why didn't you watch my drone you're so bad and then you guys just start fighting each other and then it becomes a double-sided fight where you're fighting your team and the other team at the same time and it's just mentally clashing so it doesn't matter who it is as long as they can carry their weight and vibe with each other like people you've been playing with for a while and you know they're good players stick with those guys and to top it all off for all ways of playing you gotta make sure that the people you're playing with are people you can feel comfortable around whether that's being around fragars like ash mains and people that you know you can carry some kills, you know? But don't rely too much on those guys. There's also the smart players that will be able to communicate quickly with you and overall just make it so the execute is a lot easier on both sides. And then lastly, you can have the competitive players. Once you're in a higher elo, you're going to find a lot of competitive players. I personally am one myself, so you have me on my team. If you uh, have me on your team when I solo queue, which I doubt I will ever do on my main account, but you might find me on my all account. I will give you somewhat communication if you guys talk a lot, and I won't be bringing a Maru every round with a diffuser in the site, you know? But the biggest, biggest mistake I see a lot of people are doing is playing with someone that lacks any of those things that I said. You know that friend that's from school that is your homie, you guys have been playing with each other since day one, you know, he's in silver, but you're kind of a goal two player, you know? 
and he kind of he kind of carry him along with you everywhere but then it comes to the point where the elo difference is too high you have actually have a platinum player on your team and you actually can't play with the silver and the platinum so what do you do from there little things overall you kind of have to make sure that you're always kind of in, in like in a high competitive environment to reach diamond and crimson heist it's super important that you are playing with the right people so that you can vibe with and that you can have them on your back and you know you can they can cover you because that's the hardest part is when you're kind of babysitting and kind of micromanaging your team during the round when they should already be knowing that kind of stuff so the next topic is personally what was probably the easiest season to hit diamond Crimson Heist was probably the easiest season I can hit Diamond in. Not because I got carried, not a lot of kind of stuff, but I actually felt consistent coming in. And me playing competitive, I feel a lot more comfortable with that as well. As well as the people I play with, you know, Senville, my boy Panic, and people from my competitive team. Uh, a lot of those guys and a lot of people I didn't mention, um, it's been it's been really easy. And I don't know if it's the people I'm playing up against, but they might be boosted plats and diamonds, who knows, but we still taking the dub anyway. So we know aim, game sense, positioning, and the mindset are the four pillars of a player. If you lock in one of those areas, you cannot have an imbalance because there will be a time in every single game where you need to be on top of your game. So for aim, headshots are key. Personally, I ain't the best aimer, but that's where I use positioning to put me in a good um, position to, to uh, get the upper hand on the enemy. But like, it's easier to shoot an enemy in the back than to face the best aimer head on, you know what I mean? But don't be that rat, you know? Don't be, don't always be shooting people in the back, you know? And with that positioning to put you in the better gunfight is that's where the game sends. You gotta know your way around the map. Where is the enemy gonna be running around and you know? What angle you should be taking on him. So predicting a push for your team as well as for others is really important. It's gonna be a grind to do all this, but the person with a strong mind can tolerate these things and move himself forward little by little every day failure or not four or five a heartbreaking defeat in ranked does not matter move on learn from it so to wrap it all up find the players that you know you can cover your back to try and five stack with almost every game but trust me it's the best way depending if you vibe with your team once you got the god squad going it's all about your operator lineups or utilizing utility to set up for your team and execute the bomb site drone for each other more and once you're done joining, leave the flank drone. And when you die, get on the flank drone. Stop going on TikTok. Dead teammates can also guide you, so practice your executes at every bomb site. Just trust me, a team that is most lost is going to lose that round. That's what's make a that's what makes a diamond player. That's what makes that's what makes a diamond player. Your ability to stay alive long enough to execute a bomb site to have a chance of getting a detailed coordinated push and you get one step closer to getting that bomb down. Now, if you're defending, counter that. Waste the clock and set up a nasty utility shield Jaeger ADS. I, might, I know it might not sound the best, but you know, it, it works. Bring five shields if you must, six shields. Bring Goyo and five, four different shields. Nah, I'm joking, but <laughs> that's, that's too much. Well, I'll keep